dva zavoja prije Racelanda u Krškom vidite oblak dima, dva su moguća scenarija. Nuklearka u banani ili su drifteri na stazi. U oba slučaja tulo mi je zagarantiran. Ovog puta na Racelandu, jednoj od najvrednijih malih staza u okolici, dim su proizvodili svjetski majstori bočenja. Monster Energy je organizirao druženje za medije i partnere prije nego nastavio turneju prema sjeveru. Pod njihovim šatorom, zajedno s mehaničarskim ekipama i dva monstruozna automobila, utoborili su se Steve Bugsy, prvak King of Europe-a i britanski drift prvak, te Luke Woodham, trostruki prvak Jim Cane Grid, te također britanski drift prvak. Woodham slovi za tehničara, preciznog i detaljnog vozača koji je svoje vještine brusio nakon drifta na štoperici. Jim Cane Grid je disciplina gdje igra preciznost i optimalno pizanje oko uskih barijera. Njegovo oružje po izboru je Nissan Silvia S14 sa dvolitrenim turbomotorom i oko 380 konja. Na drugoj strani crnog šatora stava je propisni monstrum, Bugsjev Nissan GT-R. Ovo automobil nastaje u samo 2,5 mjeseca u SB Motorsport garaži za Battle Drift 2 video koji su snimili Bugsji i japanski majstor drifta Daijo Saito. Po poklopcem je 7.4 litreni V8 LSX 454 motor s ogromnom turbinom koji proizvodi oko 1200 konja. Pridružili smo im se na Twin Drift Tool-om. Nakon vožnje, pridružili smo im se u šatoru u čašicu razgovora. Evo što su majstori drifta rekli za auto i točku. The Hulia is exactly the same as Gatville, it's a full, full on party in the evenings, in the woods, which is insane. And then there's about 40-50 thousand people down, down for the track in the weekend, so it's the biggest one in Sweden. So, I went there last year and I was absolutely blown away by it, so I can't wait to get back to the weekend. What about Gincana this year? Yeah, um, that's fast approaching, it always creeps up quickly, so I think uh, December time, so the car will be shipped out before that. So. We get some prepping and some practicing and change a few things to the car to make it even better. We've improved it now. Um, it's a new chassis two months ago, so we put everything we've learned over the last few years into that and it's worked incredible. So it's full of grip and um, yeah, it's going to be even faster. Do you con consider that, that it's, since the, the popularity of that uh, has been more and more, I mean, we have our own creation driver and that. Um, Marco Palian, so uh, do you consider that as uh, getting more and more competitive and running away from the underdogs or do you think they... No, uh, everyone, everyone stepped it up, everyone. Cars have got faster, the drivers have got better. You, you, you're not guaranteed a win, so it's like, as soon as you qualify, you have each battle you go into from the top plate to you have to push 110% of the lap. You cannot mess around, because it could be anyone, anyone could win. So everyone's getting better, the cars are getting faster, yeah, it's a massive challenge. And when you sat on the line waiting to go, and yeah, it's pretty, pretty nerve-wracking. Do, do you use that moment to just let them go before you so you can chase them? No, because... Psychology. Yeah, no, I used, to, I used to do that a lot, but not now. They've, they've kind of worked out that I was doing that, so um, there's no cheating. Well, not cheating. There's no jumping or anything like that. I'm working out the differences, so... You're, you're each time there's individual, so any, anything that's two seconds coming and you're out. So we're, we're racing within two, three hundredths of a second now, so you can't afford a mistake. Um, Who was your biggest, uh, who do you think is going to be your biggest uh, challenge this year? Who, who could, the drivers? could be anyone. It could be anyone. We had some last year, 
Bags him really well, which is a bit of a, a surprise. I mean, he's a good driver, but he's a good driver, you know? So for him to turn that off out of the stop tyres moving and then to grip up, it was quite impressive. And then Liam Duran was also another one who, yeah, yeah. who just kind of, I know he's a good driver, but he just proved that he qualified third and was a year. You know, there, unfortunately, the car let him down, but he, um, yeah, so it could be anyone, like I say. How hard was it for you to, to keep your line stable? Yeah, it's pretty tough. Uh, it's not my st style of driving. Mm. I, had to, I had to try and change it up a little bit. Um, you, you, you got your way about, about in, in, in that. You, you showed your, your, your skills. Yeah, yeah. And um, it's one of those events where we could, you know, change a few things in the car and have found some time. But yeah, th this year we're looking forward to it a bit more. I think there's going to be some really cool drivers coming this year as well. Some new drivers uh, that haven't been to... McCarter before, so I think it's going to be tough for everybody. Um, and yeah, with some new drivers coming who have got some really good experience in all sorts of motorsport, it's going to be anyone's game this year. So, so a quick um, cut through. For example, one side is the the drift car, and on the other side is the Gymkhana car. What are the different setups? What what's kind of? It's mainly it's mainly to do with uh, high speed, low speed. So my car is designed to drive at a fairly high speed, uh, you know, sideways uh, with a lot of angle. Uh, you know, with a Gymkhana grid car, it's about grip off the line. Uh, it's about a lot of power low down so that you're not experiencing lots of lag or anything like that. Um, angle is a bad thing to a certain degree because you want to be fast and the more angle you're carrying at a low speed, it's harder to get out, you know, get out of the cone and accelerate. Um, so realistically, you want quite a quick car, but a very grippy car, and just enough power to break traction, but enough to also pull you out. So the way that car is designed, the last time I used it, Jim Crow Grid, is that it's got a lot of grip, but it also wants to fall onto angle quite a lot. So it's hard to try and get it to not do that and try and get it to accelerate in a straight line and go, rather than wanting to drift everywhere it goes. The biggest thing is camber, front, front camber. Mm -hmm. It was like this, it wants to fall on up all the time. Mm -hmm. So we piled the camera out of the car. That's the main thing that I changed to go from Drift into Gymkhana. How, how much engineering is there for the Gymkhana now through the years? Now it's low, absolutely low. Like the stuff that I've done to that car, for what I've learned over the years. Um, yes, yeah, I mean, for a drift car, it's pretty good. It's not so bad, it's just lacking power. The Gymkhana car is bad. Like Peggy says, you want enough power and you want enough throttle response. And that's what I have that, that, that engine's mapped for response, not for top end power. So out here, it's like, well, drifting with badges, if we were onto a track that looks fast and flat, and you'd be standing in the you'd just be drifting gears and mine's more about the type thing. So the go kart track for me is perfect. So I'm like, yay! And he was like, ah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Any plans for Formula Duke? Um, it's a question I'm asked a lot, um, and yes, you know, uh, like maybe last year and the year before I was a lot more desperate to do it than I am now. I would like to do it at some point, but it means I have to sacrifice a lot to do it, and I'd have to sacrifice nearly my whole European campaign to go and do it, um, and it's tough because we do some really cool stuff over here. A lot of the events clash with stuff that I like to do in Europe. Um, so this year we are focusing entirely on the Drift Masters series, which is the European Championship, and then after that we'll worry about going further afield. But for now, uh, especially this year, we'll worry about just doing the European Championship and then look at going over to America at some stage in the future. Okay, thank you. Thank you guys for having us, and thank you for the ride. It's really cool.